The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. According to you. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him, and they were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey. And this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, and he will baptize with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. You know the, uh, the Christmas song, we need a little Christmas right this very moment. Well, actually, what we really need this very moment is a lot of Advent. Because Advent is the, is the season that tells us something is coming and something is good, but we've got to prepare for it. It's in the future. It's not here yet, but it's coming. And when it comes, if we can see it, if we can dare to believe in it, if we dare to prepare for it, Oh, how wonderful it could be. And we need a little Advent at this moment. For the people who have walked in darkness are yearning for the gloom, and there are many right now walking in darkness. From the steel workers of Indiana who have no work, to the refugee children in Syria, or those who are literally starving to death at this moment in Yemen, to those who are caught in the horrific fires and the destruction on the West Coast to those even among ourselves who have every advantage as nice, good suburbanites and yet feel that, that pall, that, that bit of gloom over us, that things are not the way they're supposed to be. And so if we need something, we need hope. And if we have anything offered to us today, it is incredible hope. It begins with, with St. Paul as he writes to the letters uh, to, the, to the Romans, and, and, he, and he, says, he says to the Romans, he says, here's why you should have hope. There is a God that's going to give you two things. Encouragement. Encouragement. And a willingness to trug along not to give up. Encouragement for what? For seeing what can be. Paul's talking to the Romans, and you know, the Romans are, are, are of, two, of two minds. They're the Jews, they're the Gentiles, and they are separated from each other. And he wants to bring them together. And so the God of, of endurance and the God of encouragement is going to call them together. And he says this, May the God of endurance, may the God of encouragement grant you to think in harmony, coming together, in harmony with each other, welcoming one another. The reality of our world, and all we need to do is turn on the news to see it, we see it day after day after day, is that we are not living in a world of harmony. We're living in a world of dissonance. We're living in a world of polarization. We are living in a world of accusation. We are living in a world that is being torn apart at the seams. We are experiencing, in a way, a new tribalism. Tribalism says, there's an old Arab saying that says, tribalism is like this, it's, it's me against my brother. And then me and my brother against my cousin. And then me and my brother and my cousin against the stranger. 
I form my little identity group. We are talking today about identity politics and identity religions and, and identity cultures, and, and this is our little group, and we are over and against the other, and so we vilify the other. The way of the world and the way that the world gets power is by dividing and conquering. One group against another group. One group saying how terrible the other group is. Now what's happening is as we bring them down, we bring ourselves down. There's an old black saying that says, if you're going to dig a hole for your brother to throw him in, you better dig two because you're going down with him. Because you're going down with him. And the question for us is, is this hard baked in our wiring? There are those who say yes. That forever there will be wars and ruins of wars. Forever there will be brothers and sisters fighting against brothers and sisters, one tribe against another, one nation against another, one ethnic group against another, one religion against another, one gender against another. Is there another way? And of course, we, we hear it proclaimed loudly. Of course there's another way. We are not hardwired into this. That may be the reptilian brain that says fight or flight, good or bad, in or out, but there's another brain, there's another noose, there's another mind. And we are invited to, to see it today. And so today, we're given a picture of how that mind looks. And today, we, and it was so beautifully proclaimed, and I hope you saw it, as, as that magnificent passage from Isaiah was read, I hope you were able to picture what can be. Now, as Christians and the followers of Christ, we are here for one reason, that we dare to believe that. You know, Christ had a name for it. It's called it the kingdom of God. In the kingdom of God, the veil is lifted. And we do see each other for whom we are at the core. And who we are at the core, all of us, are daughters and sons of God. That's the bottom line. That's what we are all shooting for. And so Isaiah, Isaiah paints this picture. He says, he says, you think you've got dead wood here? No dead wood here. For out of this stump of Jesse, which has been cut down, a shoot shall pop up, and a bud shall blossom, and the very stuff of God shall be in him. And in him is, is wisdom and understanding and counsel and strength and knowledge and fear of the Lord. And this is his delight. Now, how is he going to judge? He's going to come into the world. He's going to see all this division. What's he going to do with it? He's not going to judge by appearance. He's not going to judge by what tribe we belong to, what culture we belong to, what gender identity we have, what orientation we have. He's not going to judge by that. Here's how he shall judge. He shall judge, and this is very interesting, he shall judge the poor with justice and decide a right for the lands afflicted. If God has a prejudice, and it seems that he does, if we take the scriptures seriously, it seems he has a prejudice, and that's from the bottom up. If we're going to get to the truth of God, it's going to bubble from the bottom up, from vulnerability up, from weakness up, from poverty up. It's not going to trickle down from the top down. It almost never gets there because what we want to do at the top is to consolidate our power and hold on to it. But the weak and the poor are so vulnerable that they are open to the grace of God to bubble up. And so he is judging the poor with this justice. And, and then he goes on to say, he will strike the ruthless with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. He's going to speak truth, and truth to power. And the truth he's going to speak is that if there is evil, it must be named and unmasked. Evil always loves to hide itself as good. Always. And, and, and then we begin to buy the lie and we buy into the lie because we get caught in that mindset. We are in the mindset of the world. And the mindset of the world says it's me against my brother, me against my cousin, me and my cousin against the world. Justice shall be the band around his waist and the, and the faithfulness of the, 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 the belt on his lips. And then here it is. 
all the categories that we think we cannot undo are about to undone. I don't know if you saw the movie Zootopia or not, but this is Zootopia. For the wolf shall be the guest of the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion shall browse together with a little child vulnerability, weakness in the bottom. You, you want to know the truth? Look at your children. Listen to that baby crying right now. That's the truth. That's God speaking. And a little child, because why? It cuts through all of our categories, all of our prejudices, all of our angers, all of our judgments. The cow and the bear shall be neighbors, and together their young shall rest, and the lion shall eat hay like the ox, and the baby shall play in the cobra's den, and nothing will harm them on the mountain of the Lord. No harm. And here's the incredible thing. We think in our reptilian brain that there's only fight and flight, but there's a whole other noose, a whole other mind. And no harm or ruin shall come on my holy mountain, for the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the Lord, a new mind, as water covers the sea. It will be as common as water covers the sea. Now, can you see that? Can you dare to believe in that? Because that's our faith. That's our faith. And at this point, a sign of the nations for the Gentiles to seek out, to the Jews and the Gentiles come out, and it's, it shall be glorious, which means everybody gets in. Nobody is excluded. Now, you see it? Are you willing to act on it? See, Advent's all about preparation. It's not just about dreaming about what can be. It's also then about doing something to prepare for it to come to be. And John the Baptist tells us how that's going to happen. The Baptist comes out shouting to the people. You've been seeing it this way? That's the wrong way. You think that the tribalism is the only way? That's not the only way. Repent. Turn around. In Greek, the word is metanoia or metanoia, depending on who taught you your Greek. And it means, it means to flip around and to have a meta noose, a new mind. It's the mind of Christ. And what is the mind of Christ? The mind of Christ is inclusive. It's not exclusive. The mind of Christ comes as this vulnerable, uh, helpless child that we are, are waiting for that is going to cut through all of the garbage and the anger and the judgment that we hold on to and think we cannot live without, that we think gives us our identity. It does not give us our truest identity because our truest identity is who we are in God. And who are we in God? We're all the same. We're all the same. I did a funeral yesterday. I was with one of my former students who worked in Abu Dhabi and, and, and worked in Saudi Arabia. And he says, you know, we're all the same. He says, I don't care how radically different the culture seems, you cut through it. We want the same things. Now, one thing I've learned in all of my years is that you cut through the culture, the gender, the politics, and all the things that we think separate us, and underneath it, we are exactly the same. Every culture is convinced that no one loves their children like they do. And every culture is also convinced that no one has a cuisine as good as theirs except for maybe the Irish, but outside of that. <laughs> and I'm going to find out. I'm going to lead a pilgrimage to Ireland later on this year, and I'll find out if it's really true. But i got a hunch their cuisine's pretty good, too. Why? Because at the core, we're the same. And so here's our work. As a matter of fact, some of you have already begun this work, and that is to go to the other. Some of you began the work on Thanksgiving when you had dinner with your brother-in-law, and you did not fight with him. And his politics were so radically different from yours, and you went, leave your shoes and your politics at the door. Let's see if we can go inside of the heart to the things that count. And here's our assignment, to go out to the one we do not know, to the stranger, to the one in a different religion, in a different culture, in a different color, in a different way of seeing the world, and listening to them, and seeing the truth that is in them, because everybody has a piece of the truth. 
Everybody has a piece of the life. No one is exempt. And the lion will not lie down with the lamb until we are willing to see that and act upon it. Oh, we need a little Advent right now. Right now. And now is the time to prepare. For indeed, the Lord is coming.